Hi, Simon. Hi, Dima. How are you? I'm good. Uh, while Debbie is traveling, we are here to show you the 149 uh, Playwright release notes. Right. Uh, before we jump right into that, first tip of the day. And tip of the day today is run tests at cursor in VS Code. So if you open a command, pal command palette and type run test at cursor, uh, you will see that item. If you click it, you will uh, it will run the test that you are currently editing. But better than that, notice the keyboard shortcut or even edit it yourself. And next time you can just run the test with a single keystroke. Speeds up your testing workflow quite a bit. This is super useful. Like since I found out about this, I've been using it all the time and I, I love it. Wonderful. Uh, now straight into Playwright 149. We have a new feature for you today in the snapshot testing. We'll have a demo and then uh, an update on the Chromium headless and a bunch of miscellaneous announcements. Uh, Simon, let's go to the demo. Yeah, so snapshot testing is the new big feature in this release. And it's a nice new way of testing on content and con composition of a site. Let's look at the Playwright site here. We want to test that this banner contains the right heading and the right links. This is a test that we used to write. It's a lot of, lot of text. How do you like this, Dima? Oh, I don't like it at all. It's hard to understand what's going on. Right, and there's so much different stuff tested together, right? It's content here, it's the level of a heading, it's ordering, and it's very hard to understand what is intended and what is not. Yeah. I could do a screenshot instead. Is this better? Uh, yeah, screenshot is definitely easier to manage, but mm -hmm. I guess it's more uh, brittle. Yeah, it is. For example, think about what happens if you change the spacing between buttons. You probably intended to change the spacing, but now you need to rebaseline all your screenshots because the visuals changed, right? Right, that's cumbersome. Yeah, it is, it is. Now there's a new feature, ARIA snapshots, and I'll show you what it's about. I'll record a new expectation here at the cursor. And I'll use this uh, assert snapshot button to generate an assertion on this entire banner, right? So it generated a nice assertion for me. And this now replaces either the screenshot or this above. So it's very much the same. Dima, how do you like this? Well, this is much clearer. I can read it. Yeah. So this is a tree um, of the accessibility tree of, of your page, right? Um, actually, this comes from the DevTools accessibility pane here. So in DevTools, there's this tree. If you go into it for this page, you can see this banner element. And then inside the banner element, there's these, this heading and the free links. So exactly the thing we have here. Oh, nice. And the way this works is that um, you specify the accessibility tree you expect. And then Playwright tests if uh, the page actually matches what you expect. Mm -hmm. uh, what's that in the last link? I kind of find it hard to understand. Yeah, yeah, it is. This is a regular expression. And so this part essentially matches any sort of number. So if you look at the page here, you can see that it says 66K plus stargazers. And then this thing here would match any number of stargazers because realistically with your help, Playwright is at 67K tomorrow, right? And we don't right. want to play Playwright. Can, can I drop that if I don't like it? Right, yeah. So uh, Playwright only tests uh, on what you specify in the tree. So you could just drop this entire regular expression if you want, and then it would only test if there's a link. It wouldn't test on the accessible name of the link. Mm. Uh, what about that level one? Yeah, this is the same. Uh, you can also drop it, but this is really um, an accessibility attribute. So uh, this line means that it doesn't only test that there's a heading, but it needs to be a heading with the level one. So it would be an H1, right? You can make this two or three or whatever level you want, but you can also drop it. So if you don't care about the heading level, then you just don't specify the attribute and Playwright will only assert that there is a heading and not the level. I see. So this is not the whole uh, ARIA tree. This is just a template to match against, right? And they can only put yeah. what they care about here. Right. Yeah. You only put what you care about. And this makes it very easy to just express the things you want to test and not test the rest. Yeah. Right, I love it. Yeah, let's look at what happens if the test fails. So right now it says Plariot enables all a reliable end-to-end -end testing, and I will just change this to enabling awesome end-to-end -end testing. Right, and now if I run my test, it will fail, right? 
and it will fail because it expected reliable, but it got awesome. Now, if you want to fix this, you can either fix it in the source code directly, but imagine you have uh, a giant code base with a lot of these tests, right? You would need a way of, um, of updating, rebaselining the snapshots more automatically. And there is something we ship for that. It's called dash dash update snapshots. And you might already know this from screenshot testing. Yes. When you run with it, then the tests will still fail, but it will say that it created new base lines for this test. It created this file called rebaselines.patch. And this contains changes to make to your code base to make the tests pass again. Mm -hmm. And you can apply them with Git apply. And the way it works is that you apply them and then you go through the changes in your, in your editor and just skim them and manually verify uh, real quick that this change is actually what you intended and that it's not an unintended breakage, right? So I applied this and now it updated this to awesome and added the level back in. Now if I run this again, then the tests pass without me having to manually edit anything. That's very easy to manage. I like it. It's a really nice workflow, yeah. Um, so that's snapshot testing, at least a demo, just to recap. Uh, snapshot testing is about testing the accessibility tree of your page. And it's really useful to test the structure and the content without testing the visuals. And um, yeah, so you specify the accessibility tree you expect and you specify the names you expect. If you don't care about a name, if you don't care about an attribute, just don't specify it. That's fine, it's optional. Um, we use this accessibility tree from DevTools and um, yeah. To generate the test, you can use this new assert snapshot button in the recorder. And if you want to play around with the snapshot to figure out what specifically you want to test and if it still passes or not, there's also this aria snapshot playground in the tab at the bottom of the inspector. So try that out. Awesome. Yeah. What happened in Chromium Headless Land, Dina? Dima? Uh, yeah. Well, let me give you some history background first. So for a while, uh, Chromium has been shipping essentially two browsers in one. One is the regular one with the UI, and the other is headless shell. It is a, it renders the web pages the same way, but it is essentially a different browser with different features. For example, it doesn't have extensions, it handles PDFs differently, and uh, other things. Uh, recently, though, Chromium decided to uh, ship these two separately. So there is now a separate headless shell binary, and then a, a regular Chromium browser with the UI, and the new headless mode. And this new headless mode is uh, very closely follows the regular UI uh, browser, but it just doesn't show anything on the screen. So given that background, uh, Playwright keeps working as it was uh, working before, no matter the uh, headless changes in Chromium, no action needed from your side. Uh, everything uh, will work as before, and Playwright will run headless shell behind the scenes for your headless tests and regular Chromium for headed. Uh, that said, you can opt into new headless by specifying the channel Chromium in your config, as uh, you can see below. And this way, uh, Playwright will run the new headless mode instead of the headless shell for your headless tests. Uh, if you do that, though, you might encounter uh, some failures because uh, the tests that uh, handle PDFs, WebGL, and uh, some other things that you can uh, read about in the release notes uh, could fail, so you will have to update those tests. And also, most likely, you will have to rebaseline all your screenshots because screenshots between the old headless shell and the new headless mode are different. Uh, in exchange for that, you will get a browser that is much closer to the real browser that users are running because it's essentially the same, but just not uh, showing anything in the UI. Now, if you are a, a user of a Chrome or a Microsoft Edge browser channel, uh, the uh, you will have a breaking change because those browsers do not ship the old uh, headless shell anymore. So uh, it, this, the same applies to you. You'll have to run your test suite. You'll have to update some tests and you will have to revisit your uh, screenshots. Uh, look at the release notes for more details on that. Dima, this is the first time I'm hearing about this headless thing and headless shell and stuff. And I don't really understand. But I'm worried that I need to do something. I don't really use channels. At least I don't remember setting any channels in my config. 
Do you yeah. need to do anything? No, if, if you don't, and you have never used channels in your config, you are safe. You just run the test as usual. Playwright will handle it for you and run headless shell as it did before. It's only if you have those Chrome or MSH or any other Chromium channel specified, then you have to take an action. Thanks. What a relief. Yeah. Uh, now, going further, uh, miscellaneous updates in Playwright. Uh, first, we have uh, multiple uh, global setups and uh, global teardowns in the config. Previously, you can only specify single script in your config for global setup or teardown. Not anymore. Uh, next, we'll have uh, we do have a screenshot on first failure feature. Uh, this is in addition to always taking a screenshot at the end of your test or never doing that or taking it on every single failure of your tests. Now you can only you can do it on the first failure only, so it would limit a single uh, failure screenshot per test. Uh, and uh, last, in the HTML reporter, we have a previous and next buttons uh, on the test view, uh, which allows you to quickly uh, switch between the test cases uh, without going back to the test list. So this way, for example, you can quickly iterate over all your test failures with just the next button. Uh, there are many more uh, updates in the Playwright. Please take a look at the release notes for the full list. And as always, don't forget to update Playwright to the latest version. All right. So that's 149. If you want to know more about Playwright, go to our documentation. You can also find us on Discord, YouTube, you know that, and on X. Um, and if you have any feature requests or any bugs you find, please file issues on our repository on GitHub. Awesome. Thanks. Thank you.